Hello people, and welcome back to part 39 of Ilos, our modded city Skylines build. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Thanks so much for all support on the stream over the weekend. Uh, we had a truly wonderful time. Uh, piecing together some new condo patterns, some nice car parks in the middle of them here. Uh, framing the train line with some intersection marking tool sound barrier, uh, which has just turned out so nicely. Super, super happy with this. Alongside some playground prop detailing, of course, the... Uh, star stuff apartments playing with some new condo shapes and some new detailing ideas as well and then some more school stuff and a little bit of sort of rougher uh, canal side uh, path detailing uh, over here against the uh, LA River Network stuff that we played with a while ago so really cool additions on the stream I've had a little sort of you know the beginnings of a construction site as well you know perhaps they're waiting to have their sort of construction permit signed off by City Hall if you like so uh, there's definitely some construction vibes happening over here. But I uh, really enjoyed it and Main Street is really coming uh, into its own now. However, in the uh, ping pong vibes of Ilos that we're doing at the minute, bouncing from one side of the map to the next, I would actually like to return to uh, Ilos's eastern edge of the downtown today, uh, where we built our solar plant uh, a few episodes ago. Because I'd like to work with these spaces. So in real life, Phoenix, this is the west side of Phoenix, and it is incredibly industrialized. There is an insane amount of distribution warehouses over this side of the city. And perhaps most importantly, and what today's build is based around, is the enormous rail yard that is there in western Phoenix. But of course, it's a real life inspiration build, so we do need to head over to Google Earth. And welcome to Phoenix, everyone. So this is what we're working with today. So a little bit of sort of positioning as to where we are here is downtown Phoenix. Main Street runs up through here and the Glendale Mar grid is to the northwest. And then tucked in under the highway is, well not tucked in, I guess it's kind of forced in. It is enormous. And we have a really cool um, downtown sort of rail yard here. We sort of look over, we can see Phoenix's skyline there. Uh, lots of distribution vibes around here. But really today's build is going to be this sort of stuff. Okay, really huge rail yards, lots and lots of rail props uh, right up against the side of the road. And um, this, I believe, actually during some research in the Discord voice channels we did with the community. Uh, and an enormous shout out to Brassac for his help with this build as well. Uh, this is actually a petrochemical firm. Um, this is sort of oil refinements and processing. It's sort of chemistry beyond my knowledge, <laughs> but it's petrochemical works basically. So we can certainly replicate some silo vibes in Ilos, but really what we're looking at is how the rail yard sits against a big arterial frame, uh, like this one here. Uh, we can see how the uh, lines split into a ladder system, and then they all sort of bottleneck back down into one line where the train line rejoins the mar grid up here and resumes its cargo duties. And then it also comes through here, and then again all bottlenecks down into a single track, <laughs> which just goes alongside uh, the road back into and elsewhere into Phoenix. But of course, there's lots of orientation, lots of prop detail and ideas to be had today as to how we can bring what is a very industrial look uh, into uh, Ilos. And we will have a little brief look at the street view as well. We can see we've got all these oil containers, just literally just lines of them and rows of them as well, uh, all backed up with some, uh, I guess we can use sort of like a little sound barrier prop for this wall, all right? Also, like there's some sort of security checkpoint through the wall as well. So definitely lots of ideas uh, to be taken when we're working with uh, a build like this in Phoenix and we want to translate it into Ilos. But otherwise, that is the inspiration for today's build. Let's see what we can do with a Phoenix-inspired downtown rail yard in City Skylines. All right, so the first thing I'd like to do here is to establish the position and the shape of the rail yard first, um, just next to the road. So we can see exactly how this is going to fit in. Uh, so I'm actually going to use a little tip from Brassac here. Again, shout out to Brassac, one of our uh, wonderful server mentors and indeed uh, uh, Patreon subscribers as well. So by placing in the uh, generic single way uh, sort of one unit track in configurations of sort of side by side and then upgrading into the two way or the two track one, we can kind of double up the amount of tracks that we get in a rail yard whilst also using the same amount of nodes as well. And don't worry for those worried about the node count, I also will use Network Multi-Tool to remove 
any nodes here, because these aren't function rail lines, we don't need to worry about the nodes. It's really the aesthetic that we're after. So we can definitely do that. All right. Tremendous. So we're going to have these. So I can see in Phoenix that there's kind of a total of 18 sort of main lines. So I'm going to start by drawing in uh, basically nine of these guys straight together. Cool. So this gives us those rail lines and then we can upgrade them now into uh, the generic two line ones and this will give us really thick uh, rail yard vines make sure that's the uh, two way that's the one we want okay so we've now got a sort of a real dense packet of lines together that can be turned into those rail yards that we see in phoenix right and then we can bend these off into uh, several different shapes and sizes now as well of course so with these ones they sort of end a little bit earlier so we're going to have these three we're going to come in, we're also going to turn off node snapping too, and then draw them in together. So we'll have these ones end about there. That's going to be fine. Let's make sure node snapping is on for that one now. I'm going to bring this one out, and then this is the one that I'm actually going to hook uh, back into the actual rail network that goes through the mar grid. So I'm going to have this one sort of coming over this side. I'm going to cross it across the main road. We'll come back up with node snapping for this one. Sure, we do that there as well. Do you get some junk here? Um, I know there is a way to hide this uh, with a uh, node controller, I believe, but I can't remember how to do it right now, so we'll worry about that later. But yes, we won't leave this torn uh, rail texture in with the road, of course. Just about getting the general shape and premise decided for right now. And let's keep this one going out here. So I'd like to also reposition the entry line for this little bit of rail over here as well because I'd like to hook this into the rail yard. Yeah, it's going to maintain a connection here and then cross over this road. Shouldn't have a problem here. Yes, it's fine with that one. And then we'll bring it down. This will give us the track tearing texture again. That's absolutely fine. And then we'll bring this on the curve tool and let it flow out of the rail yard and then back out into the wilderness. Though we can just actually bring this one down a little bit further. There we go. I'm just going to carry on bringing down different lengths of track. Okay, this should be good for me. And then at certain points now I'd like to start bringing out some road guideline snaps onto those uh, top tracks here. It's going to be good for me. So here's our basic kind of train yard configuration shape here. Again, looking at what's happening on Google Earth, see how things sort of connect in and there's lots of, you know, amends and you know, slightly sort of changes to the design to have here during the DTN time timelines if needed. But for right now, it gives us a real obvious kind of base frame. What this is kind of huge rail yard, very distinct vibes. So now I'd like to focus on what's happening from the main road because this is a really uh, important aesthetic of what we're seeing in Ilos and indeed Phoenix as a result. So I'd like to start placing in some of our little tanker props here. We've used these before, of course, and using prop line tool, we can basically align them in the middle of the track. And then we'll bring them down by a few cars. Okay, place those in. That is very cool. <laughs> that is a very cool aesthetic. Really cool. Apologies as well, guys, if I do get anything wrong today. I am not a locomotive person and don't really have that much knowledge of working rail yards, I'm sure a lot of you do, but it's uh, beyond my remit, unfortunately. So we'll place in another row there, and then we can just now use Move It and its wonderful world of copy and paste to duplicate these patterns up as and where needed. And then once we have, say, a set amount, and we can perhaps extend the final two out of here. Again, I'm looking how they're actually sort of sat on the line and uh, bunched together in Phoenix. Okay, so we'll come back into Move It now. Let's go ahead and grab 
that top row of props. And we can copy that one onto the next line. And then maybe we can do perhaps another little cuter extension on this one. Let it go for a little bit longer. And there we go. Okay, so of course we'll fill out the rest of the pattern during the detail and time lapse. There's a little bit too much to do here during the episode. But that is a very distinct aesthetic, isn't it? Exactly what we saw in Phoenix. Lots of, sort of oil tank cars that are stored up. And it is appropriate as well because Ilos's oil refinery is just across the road, basically, here. It's across the road and across a little bit of desert. And then you're at the refinery. So quite appropriate to have uh, those oil tanks part in the rail yard close by, I think. Right. Very nice indeed. Very nice. Again, what we can also see in Phoenix is that there is some little bits of road network up against here, and I think a little bit of uh, parking lot road, certainly from the poorly maintained park, uh, is going to be our best friend in this scenario, I think. So we're going to bring this in. Let's then go for... And I think 22 meter poorly maintained is going to be the aesthetic everyone's on board with. We'll do a little 10 stretch and then we'll mimic this curve back in. So what was that? That was eight units. So we'll bring that back into here as well. Okay, there's a little bit of concrete that can be painted out there using the old faithful surface painter. Tremendous. And then what we are going to do is come into the old intersection marking tool. And we're going to do a little network barrier here. So let's set ourselves up a line. We will then go into decorative network. And I want to search for barrier. And I think we'll go for this standard sound barrier. I think that's quite nice. It does have the pattern on it. Um, it would be good if we could invert that so it comes on the other side. It is in the shade. But yes, it is there now. Okay. So let's now shift this off onto the uh, grass. So then we can just apply it between intersections and then just make any changes that we need to. Uh, I just need to set my offset before here back to zero. It makes it nice and flush. And if we can move Ilos's sun just a little bit further in the day, we've now got that really cute pattern that's functioning as a sound barrier, something as a safety barrier as well if you like against the rail yard. Okay, almost like maybe the city council will try to add some sort of mural uh, onto the side of the barrier here so it doesn't look quite as grim as sort of a mass industrialised rail yard in the desert here. So I think we can get on board with that, can't we? Really cute asset, this one. And it kind of looks like Ilos as well, you know, like industrialised Ilos, the mountains in the background and then all those sort of like industrial carvings in the front. It's a very appropriate sound barrier for the area, isn't it? Oh, it gives us a vibe and aesthetic, and it's one that I am indeed happy with. Cool. So, let's go ahead and get our car parking spaces in. Should be a fairly easy one to do this. Okay, so things are coming along here, starting to generate a vibe. We've got our barriers in, some repeated uh, train cart spice as well. So now I'd like to look at sort of the balking industry of uh, this area. So, think about unique factories. And I think if there's a place for the industrial steel plant to come into Ilos, it's here, isn't it? So we can use Move It again to position it. So even in a build of this size and this scale, orientation is still king. So we could have it here, right, the way we placed it in. We actually think just rotating it 180 degrees to the opposite side actually exposes a little bit of the internal of the factory to the rail yard. Almost like the factory kind of has private access into the rail yard, perhaps for deliveries or, you know, access onto it in, in general, this sort of general industrialized space. All right, so I think we can have it there. And that's going to be just tremendous, I think. It's really going to add into the continual industrial skyline that's growing in eastern Ilos. All right. Really happy with that. Very much a fan. So we're going to keep that in. Let's go ahead and hook it up with a road connection. Uh, so I think I'm going to stick to using my uh, US plane roads. Uh, but what we will do during our D-turn time lapse is actually come ahead and give all of these roads uh, a big helping 
of uh, decal because it will certainly need it. We can have a little brief sample as to what that's going to look like. Probably using a lot of our big stain stuff. It's going to be the most appropriate. Let's go ahead and remove that annoying brush size option. There we go. Yeah, so lots of this sort of stuff around is really going to be a big help for just dirtying this area up in general, especially all over the roads here. Sort of spam some down and get a general impression before refining during the time lapse, of course. A little bit of surface painter also needed in there as well. And I'm pretty sure the industrial steel plant it only wants metal. And we are producing metal in Ilos, which many of us might have forgotten about. Uh, all the way over here. Yes, we do have two ore grinding mills uh, and a fiberglass plant up this way. So these should be making enough metal. They've got um, certainly enough resource anyway. Uh, I think what we will do is apply the policy here uh, to increase the production output by 10% just so we start to produce more metal. And then this will eventually be transported all the way over here. So if only wants metal, we might as well just add in um, a large warehouse with it. So we'll do that as well. Again, we will continue to use these plain roads and we want to start factoring in some orientations and position against these highway slip ramps now that we did a couple episodes ago. So I think a warehouse, just a large one, should do us a nice big industrial job. But again, it's orientation time, isn't it? <laughs> we really, really can't help it. I think I actually want this to sort of have its ass pressed up against the slip lane, so to speak. Right, something there. That's going to give a really nice drive-by down this road too. Okay. Quite clear what you're driving past here, isn't it? Cool. So let's go ahead and give that a road connection too. So we could also provide a road here that gives direct highway access back onto this little slip ramp. Might be a nice little sort of convenience uh, road for people wanting to use that. I don't know. We'll, we'll leave it hooked in and see how much use it gets. Rather than having to come all the way back out onto the road, uh, they can just get quick highway access back onto here and, of course, into the rest of the city. Tremendous. Uh, let's go ahead and throw in a car park here as well. I think we'll go for a large one. Uh, let's go for a 40 metre poorly maintained unit. We'll leave three units for detailing. We'll have that in there. So just some sort of general parking space for the workers. Um, it will also contribute to uh, the industrial vibe just because we have so much concrete and asphalt around here. Yeah, there's a bit of service painter here and there as well. Although not service painter everywhere today, even though it is a big industrialized area, um, there's actually quite a lot of open desert and sand in these spaces. It hasn't been sort of tarmacked like the rest of Phoenix has, if you like. Okay, tremendous, wonderful news, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So I did want to curve a few of the rail lines off here, and I'm still keen to do that, but I think I've almost done it a little bit too soon there. So why don't we come back into our rail lines. Uh, we'll grab these single numbers again. And then let's bring them down. Let's go for... Let's turn off the node snapping. Let's go for 13 units. And then we'll do a little 10 curve. Let's go for 10 right there. Repeat that curve up this side. And then we're going to have these sort of holding rail yards right against the highway. Which will give us a really cool aesthetic, I think. And let's come ahead and grab that node snap point. Come right up alongside. And then, there we go. And then we can just upgrade those into the two track ones. Which then doubles up our capacity to have lots of lines. Sort of compressed against each other here, doesn't it? Really cool. <laughs> I haven't really built a major industrial rail line like this before. So, we did have our time on the mark grid. Uh, so, yep, store metal here, please. Yes, we had this one over in the Margrid uh, many, many moons ago. But it's quite small and also suburban as well because it's right by uh, the Glendale Margrid frames. But there's an alien covering around here as well, I believe, isn't there? Pretty sure. Yes, there we go. There's aliens trying to rob the trains. One here. I'm pretty sure there's one on the other side. There's one hiding in the bush as well, I think, isn't there? There's one that's on lookout. Yes, there. <laughs> there he is. Yes, one's keeping a lookout while the others uh, rummage through the carriages to try and find a way back home, of course. The ever-growing law of the eyeless aliens. We also had someone suggest as well that um, all of the planes in the sky, rather than actually being planes, are 
It's the alien invasion, right? <laughs> it's all the UFOs coming into land. I think we'll go with that. It's, it makes it seem a little more realistic, doesn't it? Tremendous. Right, come back into our roads and carry on building. So yeah, the other distinct vibe that we saw in this side of Phoenix was uh, silos, specifically oil looking silos. So we can actually place uh, the crude tank farms outside of an oil industry area. And because they're storage and not sort of processing or manufacturing, um, they can be placed wherever we want. We don't need to drag the industry area over for these. So we're going to have some crude tank farms out here. And again, I want to make sure that orientation here is really hammering home what we're trying to do. I think it is, isn't it? We definitely want to double these up though. And we'll go for a few more of them. Uh, so, massively annoying that this won't connect in, although I guess we don't need it to. We could actually have some sort of dual ra road action here. We could anarchy in a connection, but it's kind of way too small of a node space, and they do have other ways in and out, so... I think we'll go with that. Right? It gives us a cool aesthetic, doesn't it? Two sort of road against road action, parallel roads there, fronted networks, etc. So, bring this one down as well, and we will go for no guideline snapping. Cool. Almost looks like a maintenance yard now for people to get out to these tracks, or maintenance road rather. And then we will duplicate this one. We'll have that in there. And if it's a case of, again, if we want to sort of fuse these together by just aligning their fences so it's like one continual giant silo complex, if you like. I think we can get away with that, can't we? And we'll bring this one up on this tile. And we can hook it in and then create some spaces over this side as well. So there's some fairly nice sort of industrious looking assets in there, isn't there? It's going to do us a job here today as well. And what we could also do is bring in a third, or I guess a second medium warehouse here. Now it looks like it might kind of squeeze in perfectly there. And then just use this one to store uh, unique factory products. Uh, just for stuff that's produced from the uh, steel plant here. Uh, which does have not enough electricity. So uh, we should fix that if possible. Let's bring in uh, our power lines. I think we will actually have these running sort of this side of the line instead. And maybe bring it through this space. And then this can carry on. Uh, sort of down to here, looks like a natural convergence point. And then there we go. So we see lots of these rural power lines uh, in and around Phoenix, so I'm happy to have them both sides of the road here. If not, it's kind of a pointless usage of nodes, isn't it? It sort of is, so we can probably actually lose a few of them now, like these ones. Yeah, let's take that away, and then we'll lose these sides as well. It would be nice to have both sides, but it's it's noted shot I can't afford to burn through. So we should be okay. Wonderful. This guy is producing now. So these guys will produce quite a bit of traffic just as they've been placed because the AI wants to fill it up. So we'll do that as well. That's going to be fine. So if we want to continue the sort of industrial vibes, we could look at a way of processing the oil that we're storing here as an extension of the oil plant over there. Um, for which the cracker plants might do a good job. We'll have a few of these in here. There's also the waste oil refining plant or the petrochemical plant too. I think the petrochemical plant would be appropriate because in Phoenix this is a real petrochemical company that owns and operates this rail yard. So that could be something worth considering. But otherwise it's not too bad. It's not too bad is it? Right, let's talk about some sort of generic industry configurations here. Uh, and then we can have a look at a detail in town that's to bring in the rest of the train props, the fencing, and all the desert overgrowth that we're so fond of in Ilos these days. Okay, so it looks as though uh, the ore grinding mill trucks that are transporting um, metals over here are actually using that little slip lane back onto the highway because they have to go all the way, I'm guessing he's coming straight down here, taking the interchange and then back into the town. But that was a good idea, actually, as it turns out. I say sounding surprised, <laughs> but, uh, yes, industrial traffic is using the highway, uh, which is great news. Really good, I'm assuming this guy's going to come down here as well in a second. Uh, we do want to turn traffic lights off here, though. we don't need them on the internal section of the complex. 
Anyway, before we have a look at DSN time lapse, I would like to talk about some fusing of uh, generic industry buildings. So we don't really use these too often, and indeed, it's a lot of kind of the shorter, more weirder ones that we want to use today. Um, kind of like the one by ones and the one by twos. So we'll also use some of the larger ones. That like this one, uh, in particular, is a really sort of appropriately themed asset. Especially if we sort of grab it and then expose its silos over towards the rail line. You know, we can hit some of those. Vibes that we were looking at in Phoenix. Okay, maybe have this one there a little bit. Right. Slowly comes together with each asset we add, doesn't it? Slowly but surely. Okay, so let's find a good place uh, for the fusing of the generic industry buildings. We'll also do a few more uh, during the D10 time lapse as well. Right, so let's start spamming down some stuff. Let's start off with these silo ones. Uh, and then let's go for. Yeah, a little happy spam of them here. Uh, we'll bring them together as close as we can. Probably so we can sort of merge their sort of white foundations. We're too much about the bower props on there that are being fused together. We can barely see them. We can also bob them off as well if need be. Okay, and then I want to just uh, copy and paste uh, a few of these now. So we'll have them there, and then we'll grab uh, the again as well and we can duplicate these up perhaps spin them around and again you can just see lots of little different patterns that are available uh, in Google Earth there's a lot of different sorts of these designs okay so we've now got a cluster of sort of silos there if you like I also think that some uh, three by three little warehouse action is going to be uh, appreciated in here as well. we'll sort of have this as admin within the silo complex itself. Now let's find something uh, slightly bigger here now that we can potentially fuse into this. There's also some action with these that can be had as well, though these aren't quite as fusible as the other ones, but what we can do is perhaps leave that on a little angle out here. That's going to work for me, I think. We've always got these little cute ones too. These make great little sort of admin sheds. I think I'm going to have one of these within the facility too have that there. We will obviously need to give these a road connection. Could use building spawn points as well, but it's sort of yeah, really make a difference it's hard to you. So some of these are upgrading. I need to make them historical of course. Okay, and then let's add perhaps a couple of these together. So these are really uh, fusible assets. I might even uh, come to the conclusion where I actually want to bob these a little bit. So I really just want that industrial fence to go. There we go. Yeah, makes it a lot more mergeable. Then we can just sort of fuse these little silos together, which again gives us sort of a larger sense of facility, doesn't it? And then why don't we have these kind of facing this orientation? There we go. And then we'll come ahead and grab a road. Let's go for a little one unit dirt one, should be appropriate. And then really just want the angle snap here initially. And then come off the angle snap and then have that come in here. That little road connection is going to provide uh, connection for all of these assets apart from uh, this one I believe which is leveling up again which is massively irritating. I wish it would stop. <laughs> I wish it would stop leveling up. But it's fine. Again we'll just copy and paste it. I need to change the setting in um, Rico I think for them to not level up once placed. Or to place as historical rather. And I think a little bit of gravel texture is going to be more than welcome around here as well. Especially in these sort of little mini piece together areas. Have that around there. You can see another one is leveling up. It's massively destroying what I'm trying to talk about here. <laughs> we will fix that. Of course it would have to not behave itself when I'm recording. There we go. This one on the back will need a little bit of building spawn point I think. Then if we go ahead and grab some of the old faithful chain link fencing. Let's go ahead for these ones. And then we'll just have this run around the back edge of the complex and there we go and then perhaps some smaller sort of industrial props would go well here as well uh, like our shipping containers which again we can use prop line tool with no fence fill and a little rotation turn our default space into and bring this down to maybe like two meters maybe a little bit more than that actually maybe like four meter spacings and then we can have some in there Let's remove that awkward surface painter on this side. 
Okay. Slowly coming together, I think, isn't it? And there's quite a bit of generic industry packed in here as well, you know. So, it should be producing goods for us at the same time, which is nice. Didn't the store acquire that building again, did I? So it's going to level up. <laughs> it might. We will fix that, don't worry. Uh, and then definitely, I think, um, some grasses as well. Search for, yeah, some of our uh, brown hill grass. Be really welcome around sort of the back edges of it. Let's turn the strength down a little bit. All sort of through here too. A little bit of texture to that gravel painter. And then definitely some bushes. And uh, possibly saguaros in there too. So, <laughs> it will look good once this stops leveling up. So we can just create little clusters of industrial space, if you like, by fusing together generic industry assets. Creating sort of a little bit of mini admin areas. Laminate floor sign kind of kills the vibe, but you ignore that, it's okay. Yeah, and then just sort of place them around and have fun with them. Taking inspiration and shapes and designs that we see from facilities uh, that we've had a look at in Google Earth today. We can just piece them together and just make it look nice and more industrial in different shapes and fashions and whatnot. However guys, that does feel like a good point for a detailing time lapse. We've got the bulk of the building now, our major infrastructure assets, and discuss some ideas about filling smaller spaces with uh, many fused uh, industrial uh, assets from the base game. We can create some really nice complexes at doing stuff like this, so we'll continue to place these around the facility during the time lapse. Uh, lots more grass and overgrown sort of vibes around the edge of the facility, uh, alongside the completion of the full uh, facility fencing using IMT against the networks. Uh, also coming through as well with network multi-tool and essentially removing every single node from the straight pieces of track. So because there's such enormous node wastes, we don't really need them. So we'll just get rid uh, of all of them. So that should save a few nodes from all the rail tracks I've used today. Yeah, and then just generally tie it up. Lots of little prop detailing, little bits of detail everywhere. Perhaps some palms and trees and just generally tie it into um, its mar grid frame on the uh, eastern edge of downtown Ilos. Otherwise, let's detail the large industrial rail yard. And then we'll be right back.
Okay, guys, so let's have a detailing review, shall we? Uh, this has turned into one of my favourite little industrialised areas of Ilo, so there's a lot to get involved with here. But first of all, let's check out the train yard. We've continued to expand uh, those train patterns again using the props that we've used before in various different configurations and indeed taking inspiration from Phoenix, like the mass repeated and just parked up oil containers here, which you imagine has some correlation towards the oil refinery over there, which I'm quite happy with. Uh, lots of stain decals all over the place. Indeed, one of these cute little loading bay assets that we have used before, actually. Um, it's in the rail yard over here. Uh, we do have a couple of these loading bays, so we've used them again. Uh, repurposed them. And it, it turned out really nicely. Just uh, a little sort of loading dock here on the front of the road that spills onto the back of the uh, sort of train lines here, so super happy with that. Uh, lots of container and uh, sort of truck detailing in and around the entrance of the warehouses. Also manually dropped in some trailers against the back so it looks like they're ready to be loaded and distributed and whatnot. And then again, this just has that kind of open access vibe back onto the rail yard. Uh, we've used a bunch of Avania's garbage props and indeed some of Avania's garbage processing that we have used in the city before. Just to help fill some of these spaces uh, alongside uh, the continual fusing of generic industry assets. Uh, like we talked about in the little complex over in the corner. And then some little truck and digger props here that we've had in Ilo, some grass, some decals. Uh, one of the army tent sort of storage unit things that we used for Area 51. Alongside a little shed and another little one by one uh, industrial unit over here again, just as a little bit of sort of admin or, you know, housing, not housing, but you know, it's just administration basically is the point I'm trying to make. It also downloaded uh, some engine sheds off of the workshop and what we do see quite a lot in Phoenix is these little sort of one track um, areas coming through the city uh, in various different points and they just sort of end. It's like a little sort of mini access so decided to use that idea as some sort of engine housing here. So a couple of locomotives that are sat outside of the engine store again with some grasses that now spill back into the facility. Uh, where we will also stumble across some trash detailing and again some more uh, container props over here as well just again mass repeated in a layer with prop line tool uh, and then chiseled away just so it looks like you know the full roster isn't in stock if you like i've just realized there's a street like that we'll have the network skins that away uh, also an avania warehouse again more a uh, generic industry and then some more uh, oil tanker uh, detailing against the main silos which looks really cool I also moved this industrial asset over into the silos itself uh, and then added in another one of these loading bays that has been fused uh, into the side of the industrial steel plant and this just works so nicely having this little rampart come up here and then you sort of into here you know you get access into you know, the back end of the factory where there's all these props and people uh, walking through the fences of course and then of course it goes into the wider at steel pond itself which is making us uh, a tasty profit it is being supplied at 150 percent production rate uh, from those ore mines way off uh, in the distance have also realized this needs uh, setting as well we will go for unique factory products over there and then also added in some smaller supplementary warehouses which is a small yard and a medium warehouse uh, just sort of fused together uh, on the corner of the road which rounds out uh, this area quite nicely and it's turned into a really wonderful build very industrial lots of vibes happening over here and indeed it's satisfying some generic industry some oil storage and indeed some garbage collection uh, over in this processing plant too so it's just turned into a wonderful little build and of course this prop detailing we saw in the episode it's like someone has abandoned their car here which is cool i guess in their parking for work but <laughs> it's just it's just there now and then we're just met with these cute little intimate yards, if you like, for lack of a better phrase. Uh, when we're looking at all this, all this stuff up here. I think it all really helps blend uh, into the wider facility. There was a little bit of node issue here for some reason. Uh, this is closing, even though it's not an active rail line. So I'll fix this before the cinematics, but there's a little bit of junk happening here. But that is going to do it for Ilos' eastern downtown main rail yard. Uh, it's always really fun piecing these things together. And uh, apologies if I have got any sort of train logic wrong, if you like. I am not a train person, uh, but I know there are a few of you in the community. And again, thank you uh, to Brassac uh, for his 
uh, linkings to several different assets that we've used today. Um, I will leave those collections linked down below if you want to get involved with like really heavy, super realistic rail yard builds. There is a ton of assets on the workshop, especially from Revo. Uh, so yeah, depends how much you want to get into it. But there is a bunch of cool stuff on there. It's all linked down below if you want to go check it out. In further news, I'm really happy with this. It's a really fun continuation of the mass industrialization of uh, Eastern Ilos. Again, taking inspiration from Phoenix. But uh, yeah, it's really cool. Lots of cool vibes here today. Lots of fun decorating. Uh, with the containers and fusing of generic industry assets. Uh, it's all come together really quite nicely. The next episode of Ilos will possibly be delayed due to the breaking of the mods with a new expansion on the horizon. So it might be a week or two before we get back into Ilos after this episode. Just while we wait for the mods to find their feet again with the new patch. But otherwise please do hang around for some cinematics but I will shut up and I will leave it there. Let's thank you all so much for watching and as always... Enjoy the rest of your day.